Welcome to the last episode of the 3DS Max tutorial. As you can see, I'm recording this in English because the translation of the other videos were way too much effort. And we only do this in our spare time, so it's basically too much time we spend in the translation of the English subtitles. And that's the reason why I'm, I chose to record this video in English. And let's go. Today I want to talk about the material editor and the textures and all around the textures in 3ds Max. As I said, this is the last episode of this 3ds Max uh, tutorial. So the next tutorial episode will be about uh, the basics to create a building in 3ds Max for Lotus. So stay tuned. And now we start with the tutorial. The first thing is we create a box. So we simply draw out the box and change the values of the length, width and height to 30, 30 and 50 meters. And we uh, transform it to an editable poly. And this is our base for the tutorial. So the first thing, if you want to create a texture or to mainly put the texture on your model is you go to the material editor that's a button right here. It's a ball with a chess shape on it. The first thing I have to admit is that the material editor can be changed to the old material editor, which is the compact material editor. I personally like this form of the material editor because it's the old version you know from 3ds Max 2010 and so on. But to refer to the future and future modes, I recommend to use the slate material editor. So the first thing you want to do is scroll down of the, on the left side and go to sample slots. As you can see here, we have 24 sample slots and because of this, you can only use 24 textures, but well, you don't need more than 24 textures in one object, I guess. So to create a material, shall I simply move this one of the slots into the view, click on instance and then OK. And now we have a material with the maps on the left side and a handle on the right side. Now we want to put a texture in here and to do so we go to bitmap and put it also in view. If you release the mouse button, you will get instantly the open texture file dialog. Now we load a texture in here and yeah, for Lotus you can use BMP files or DDS files. Other formats will maybe support it later. The next thing you want to do is uh, to click on the right handle on, of the bitmap and connect it to the diffuse color. We'll mainly use the fuse color because it's the basic color channel you use when you are texturing an object. Or you can also texturing single polygons. But in this case, we want to select the object, select the material and then click on assign material to selection. A basic concept of 3ds Max is that the material editor and the viewports are working different. So not every change you do in the viewport will affect the material editor and the other way around. So to show the texture in the viewport, we have to click on show shaded material and viewport. And there we go. And now we have the basic of our texture. So let's look at these four modifiers. We separated them in the first episode, I guess. And yeah, three of them you will use quite often and basically you will use them every time you are texturing an object. So at first we want to select a polygon and click on UVW map. And the first thing you see is the mapping default value is planner. Basically that doesn't look very good. So we'll change it to box and see that it's the setting we'll see on the other sides. Also quite common is the usage of face. I'll show you the difference between box and face later. And the other stuff is cylindrical, spherical, shrink wrap and 
X, Y, Z to U, V, W are yeah, not so common use. Maybe you need cylindrical when you use a um, cylindrical object, obviously. But yeah, let's use box. And what we'll see now is the tile function and the, the values uh, which are shown here. So as we know, our length values were different. So we set this up as we know, and we'll get the basic values we set before and the vision we got before. And we can now change the tile values. So basically, if you have a texture you can tile, there's a good way to set the values in this modifier. So let's start with a factor of two. And we'll see now we have two windows in there and we have basically extend the vision. You can cho also choose a value between one and zero. So let's use 0 0.5 and we have an half window there. If you don't want to use this or you want to uh, translate or move the window a bit, you can choose the UVWX form modifier. And now you see here the uh, exact possibilities you had in UVW map, but you got an offset and the offset is quite good to use if you want to move the a little bit as you can see here you can set up an alternative vision yeah that's the main thing about uvw x4 so let's put this on the object and we'll select another object now we select face and go to the unwrap uvw modifier click then on open re-editor and now we have this view with uh, tons of buttons We'll basically need the move, rotate and scale button. Then we need the vertex, edge or polygon button. We need the numbers down there, but we don't need the W number because it's um, a very strange ratio you have to calculate. So better don't use it in the beginning. The basic idea behind this is to load a te the texture, your map. And then you can move vertices. Yeah, you get a very beautiful looking vision in the viewport instantly. So restore, restore the values. As you can see here, we've set the original values. The next thing I wanna show is the edge. You can also move this edge around. You can, if you want to also rotate the edge, which is also beautiful looking. And you can um, move the whole polygon. It's also a very nice function. And the last thing is I want to show last thing I want to show you is the scale function. And as you can see, obviously if you select four vertices, you uh, scale the whole object or the whole vision. But if you select only two vertices, you can scale the vision like this. So we set this also to the object and now I'm going to show you the difference between face and box. To do so we extrude the polygon and we'll see now see the famous one pixel mapping. So the width of this mapping is exact one pixel. Basically you want to avoid this one pixel mapping every time. To do so we set a mapping to this polygons by clicking on UVW map. Click then on box and you will see here that the right and left side is rotated correctly because if you change it to face, you see it's the other way around. So the rotation looks very strange. Basically, if you extruded an object or a polygon and you set a mapping, you mostly need the box value. The last thing I want to show you is the rendering. So the viewport textures are set to the max resolution is 256 and 256 pixels. And that's not a very high value you may know. So you can render the scene basically to apply a better lightning and stuff like that, but also to 
get a screenshot you want to uh, send your friends on the internet or something like that the first thing you can do is click the button rendered frame window then click render and your object appears but this is the uh, default value and the default values aren't that good so you basically click on render setup now you can Go to output size, click HDTV video. Now you have a 16 to 9 resolution. And if you now click on render, you see a better resolution and you can zoom in and have a good looking object. That's basically the basics. Ha, what a joke. In the next episode, as I said, we talk about the basics of creating a building lo for Lotus. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you the next time. Bye.